Um, so on to the reason why you are all here. Um, this evening, I'm so pleased to welcome Lynn Sher to discuss her new biography of Sally Ride. Um, I think we're all pretty familiar with the public persona of Sally Ride. Um, many young women, myself included, grew up wanting to be just like her. Um, and thanks to uh, this new book, we can feel like we know her better than ever. And the book really shows a more personal side while still showing, you know, the well-known and compelling tale um, that is Sally Ride's story. Um, the book clearly benefits from uh, Ms. Cher's access to um, Sally Ride's family and friends and their cooperation in her research and um, she has some really nice uh, anecdotes to, to share. Um, and of course Ms. Cher herself is a longtime journalist with ABC News where she cr uh, covered a variety of topics including the NASA Space Shuttle program. Um, so we're so glad she's here with us tonight and um, we're going to start off with a quick video but first uh, join me in welcoming her to Politics and Prose. This is um, for all of my TV pals, all my ABC friends. This was done by the publisher. Uh, this, is, this is among their early forays into video. So um, actually, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. It's just about five minutes long. I'm Lynn Sure, and this is History in Five. And I'm going to tell you five incredible things about Sally Ride. America's first woman in space. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human to etch his footprint into lunar soil. One small step for man. A teenager back on Earth was among the untold billions watching closely that night, but had no idea that she too would one day make cosmic history. Sally was a baby boomer born in 1951, a valley girl from Encino, a Los Angeles suburb, who was a ranked junior tennis player. After her sophomore year in college, she realized she didn't have what it took, and she always joked that what kept her from turning pro was, quote, my forehand. Sally was fascinated by science, specifically astrophysics, the physics of astronomy. She was blessed with parents and teachers in high school and college who encouraged her scientific passion. forehand. Sally was fascinated by science, specifically astrophysics, the physics of astronomy. She was blessed with parents and teachers in high school and college who encouraged her scientific passion, and she confided in her best friend that she wanted to be famous by winning the Nobel Prize. Sally never considered a career at NASA because she didn't think women would ever be eligible to fly. It was only in 1977 when NASA spread a wide net to recruit women and minorities that Sally got interested. I want to get up as soon as I can. So that means that I'd like to be the first woman up, but uh, I, don't, I don't have any uh, great desire to be the first woman. Sally wasn't the first woman in space. Two Russians beat her to orbit. Valentina Tereshkova in 1963 and Svetlana Savitskaya in 1982. But in 1978, Sally became one of the first six women chosen to train as NASA astronauts, six women in a class of 35 new guys. I don't mind people asking me questions about what I'm gonna do on orbit and whether I'm gonna be doing any of the cooking on orbit, unless it's asked by someone who expects that the only reason that I'm flying is because Crip needs somebody to serve him coffee. Sally's on this crew because she's more qualified to be here. She and her colleagues trained exactly the same as the men, parasailing into shark-infested waters, practicing parachute landings, and she got totally hooked on flying. There's really nothing that I'd rather be doing right now. What I really want to do is fly as many times as they'll, they'll let me fly. Then after four years of training, NASA selected Sally to be the first American woman to fly. I do feel that there's some, some pressure for me to not mess up. <laughs> the publicity and the hoopla surrounding a U.S. female flyer 
made her an instant celebrity. When, when there was a funny a glitch or whatever, uh, how did you respond? How do you take it as a human being? Do you, do you weep? Do you, uh, what do you do? Why doesn't anybody ask Rick those questions? <laughs> She was 32 on June 18, 1983, when she lifted off in Challenger on STS-7. Liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. Sally felt the immense power of the rockets pushing her off the Earth. And half a million people lined the causeways near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, cheering, Ride, Sally, Ride. And then she floated blissfully throughout the cabin when they reached orbit. During the seven-day flight, Sally took in the view from the shuttle's windows. Being able to put, put on a pressure suit and then open the hatch and step outside and, and have a view of essentially the universe out in front of you. But she was especially riveted by the thin royal blue line of Earth's atmosphere. That's all there was, she'd later say. It's so clear from that perspective how fragile our existence is. Sally Ride was my friend for 30 years, but while I thought I knew her well, I really only learned about her by writing this biography. Sally was a fiercely private individual who avoided public appearances when she could and always preferred the company of one or two people to a crowd. Sally was a superb compartmentalizer who liked to control the narrative of her own life. And in an era when homosexuality was still not widely accepted, Sally kept her sexual orientation private. While at NASA, she was married to fellow astronaut Steve Hawley, a bond that lasted for five years. She then entered a relationship with another woman, Tam O'Shaughnessy, for more than a quarter century. Sally never talked about her life with Tam, never came out publicly but wholly supported Tam's decision to reveal their partnership after her death from pancreatic cancer in 2012. So who was Sally Ride? She was a space traveler who saw herself as an educator. She wanted middle school girls to feel the excitement that she had felt, and no challenge matched the thrill of watching the neurons fire in a young girl's brain when she learned about science. Sally was especially intrigued by the possibilities on the planet Mars, and often told children that they'd be the ones to set foot there. It might be one of you, she said, and that will be cool. That will be very cool. I was uh, very honored that, that NASA chose me to be the first woman. It's time that, that people realize that uh, women in this country can do any job that they want to do. Sally Ride. You can just turn it off now. Uh, I hope you all are aware that um, it was this past week that was the 31st anniversary of, of Sally's flight. She took off, uh, uh, she landed yesterday uh, 31 years ago exactly. So we are celebrating an anniversary, which is very exciting. And, and thank you all for being here, and thank you particularly all my ABC friends. And is that Frank? Yeah. <laughs> My goodness, so many people here. It's great. Um, thank you for coming and, and letting me tell you some more about this terrific woman who was somebody I covered and was somebody who was my friend. Um, that's a little bit about Sally. I'll tell you a little bit more. Um, I will tell you that um, her name is now attached to a number of important things. Several schools around the country, uh, an impact crater on the moon, uh, an outer space science venture, and soon a ship, a research vessel, will be called the Sally K. Ride, and uh, uh, scientists will be able to look beneath the sea for exactly the kinds of things Sally was seeing up in the sky. Uh, posthumously, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama. In her lifetime, she played herself in an episode of the TV show Touched by an Angel, and she threw out the first pitch at a World Series game. 
She was regularly begged 